Hi guys, Tickle101 here. Today I'll show you how to represent all the logic gates using NAND gates. As you probably already know, a NAND gate is pretty much an AND gate, but with all of the outputs inversed. In this video, I'll be using A and B as inputs and O as output. Well, I think NAND is pretty easy, so we can rule that out and we can go straight to NOT. As you can see from this NAND truth table, two zeros will make a one, and two ones will make a zero. If you have just one input, then you can use a NAND as a NOT gate, since two zeros will make a one, and two ones will make a zero. So that would mean one zero would make a one, and one one would make a zero. Here, in this diagram, we are using one input for both of the inputs in this NAND gate, therefore making it a NOT gate. Now we're going to move on to the AND gate. Remember, a NAND gate is pretty much an AND gate, but with a NOT at the end of it, inverting the outputs. Since NOT NOT is just the original input, we can do NOT NAND, which is just AND. Here is a normal NAND gate, and here is the NOT gate at the end of it. Now remember, we cannot use the actual NOT gate because we are only allowed to use NAND gates, but remember, we have already made the NOT gate out of this, out of NAND gates, in this diagram here. So, we can just simply use this in here. And with that, we have our AND gate. Now let's move on to the NOR gate. As you can see in my not very well drawn Carnot map, or 2D truth, t truth table, we can see that a NOR is pretty much not B and not A because there are no other outputs that are 1 in any other cell except not B and not A. <coughs> Notice that the binary operations we use here are NOT and AND, both of which are gates that we have already created using NAND gates. Therefore, we can now create our NOR gate using this expression. Here we have our A and B inputs. Here we are NOTting both inputs, as in the expression. And here we are ANDing those two knotted inputs, exactly like it is in the expression. This gives us our NOR gate. Now we will move on to the OR gate, which is probably... which is quite simple now that we have our NOR gate. Remember that two knots just result in the original input. So therefore, we can apply the same rule we did when we got the AND gate of NOT NAND with OR by doing NOT NOR. Here we have NOT OR, but you may notice at the top here we have two NOT gates in parallel with each other. If you think of the inputs going through, it'll eventually reach this stage where it'll be NOTted and then NOTted again. This is, well, it's not really doing anything, and it's sort of a waste of space, because these two knots cancel each other out. So, we can take these out, therefore leaving us with our simplified OR gate. Now, we will move on to the XOR gate, or exclusive OR gate. 
the XOR gate is a little bit harder to do, but it can still be done. Looking at the XOR Kano map of two inputs, we can see that an XOR gate is B and not A, or A and not B. This expression may be a little bit ugly to look at, but if it helps, adding brackets does make it look a little bit nicer and a little bit closer to mathematical syntax. So now that we have this, we can see what kind of Boolean operations that we need to create an XOR gate, which seem to be NOT and an OR, all of which we now have. First of all, we need our A and B inputs, of course. Now, we need a normal A input, and we need a NOT A input. Same thing goes with B. On the left side, I have added NOT B and A, and on the right side, I have positioned NOT A and B, so that the diagram doesn't look too complicated. And I've also color-coded A and B, just for this example, so that nothing gets too confusing. Now that we have our inputs, we just need to AND these together. And we already have the AND gate, so... Here, I have now ANDed both the left-hand side and the right-hand side to give, off, to give us these parts of the expression. Now, all we have to do is all them together, and then we will have our XOR gate, or of which we have already comprised of NAND gates. Here, I have applied the OR gate to the two inputs that we have remaining, but notice that inside the diagram we have two NOT gates parallel to each other. Like before, we know that two NOT gates cancel each other out, so we know that this part of the diagram is unnecessary. Once those knots have been cancelled out, this is pretty much as far as I would go, but on Wikipedia there is one extra step. This is Wikipedia's solution, and this is my solution. Of course, the Wikipedia solution looks more elegant and a lot cleaner, but I think I have a better understanding of how to derive the XOR gate using my one. Using Wikipedia's one, I'm sure it's right, but I wouldn't know how to properly derive it. So, for, for this video's sake, I am going to use my one, but in an, I don't know, in an interview or an exam or whatever, you can feel free to use whichever one you like. They're both the same. Now we have our XOR gate. Now, the final gate is XNOR. I don't really find XNOR to be very commonly used, but it's still a gate and should still be considered as one of the gates constructed with NANDs. This gate is, well now that we have NOR, it should be pretty easy to create. Just create an XOR gate and stick a NOT gate at the end of it. The red bit is the XOR gate and the blue bit is the NOR gate. I have color coded each um, gate, something that I probably should have done at the start of the video, but well, oh well, as long as you understand it, that's all that counts. Now we have our X NOR gate. We now have all of the gates using NAND gates. And hopefully you know how these work and how we have derived them. Yep. Thanks for watching.